Hello, I'm Garen Thomas, winner of the 2018 Tour de France, rider for Ineos Grenadiers, and welcome to the world of Zwift. Hello and welcome to the world of Zwift, the most viewed and the most enjoyable weekly show based on virtual cycling anywhere on the planet. I give you the OJ board, no money back guarantee on that. This is what we have on the show this week. Nathan Guerra is here to chat about the ZRL community divisions. A to Zwift is back and it's bigger than ever. We catch up with 2024 rider Shayna Paulus. I try more strange ride fuel in the feed zone. The mighty, mighty Matt Stevens is here to look ahead to the final ZRL race. And we've got Carly Taylor taking us on a rider recon. But before any of that magical, magical stuff, why don't you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you can be first to watch the show each and every week. And while you're doing that, I'm going to peer directly into your soul. Okay, there's some freaky stuff in there, but I like it. Done, perfect. The Aero Army Win TT Series, well that kicks off on Monday. It is a chance for you to get involved in this fun but tough event. Riders will all have to ride TT bikes, eliminating the chance to catch that sweet, sweet draft. If you join Zwift Power, you'll be able to see who and how you're stacking up against the rest of the competition and track your progress over six weeks. The ZRL teams have been announcing their squads for the upcoming races. No pins R3R from the Premier Division, but they announced their team like this. Pretty standard, but classy. The community divisions, while they've been using increasingly creative ways to announce their teams, Draft B's team have got quite the acrobatic feel to them. Think Blades of Glory in Zwift. Dirt Wolfpack had to include an image of a wolf howling, and so did we, that's the law. And finally, South Shore bikers, well, went a little more lo-fi. Hmm. Well, that got me thinking, how would a was team profile shot look like? Well, here it is. The Women's Ride and Run series is here, and it involves a whole host of group rides, podcasts, and even a star-studded live panel, all to celebrate Women's History Month. Capping off the festivities, there will be a woman-led ride to climb Ventop, the toughest in-game ascent on Swift, but the aim is to create a social ride where everyone will help each other to reach the peak. Make sure you all go and get involved. The Power Up Podcast has a new episode. They tackle some difficult but fascinating subject matter this week, and that is athletes who suffer from eating disorders. Pro triathlete Eloise de Luar is joined by Rini McGregor, a leading sports and eating disorder specialist. And we need to pop the virtual champagne to celebrate an amazing achievement by rider V. Gwen. She broke the Veveresting world record on the 13th of February with a time of 7 hours, 33 minutes and 43 seconds. 53 ascents of the radio tower. Ouchie muck ouch face. There is a popular legend that says ABC is as easy as 1, 2, 3. Let's put that to the test. It's A to Zwift. C is for climbing. Look at the views from here. But to get here, you're going to have to head for the hills. Some of us are spinners, some of us are mashers. A lucky few seem to have mountain goat DNA. No matter what box you're in, follow these tips when the road heads skyward. Tip one, stay cool. A good fan will keep you cool. You'll welcome it. When was the last time you said that about a headwind? Tip two. Maintain a cadence of 75 RPMs or more. Why? Because spinning is efficient and reduces stress on your knees, which, let's be honest, are on loan from God. And tip number three, stay relaxed. It'll help you conserve energy. Whether you're going for an Everstein attempt, trying to ascend out this whip in less than an hour, or taking on the leg snapper climb in Innsbruck, the smarter you climb, the more fun you'll have. D is for drop shop. Who doesn't like shopping for a new bike? No one. Every time you ride on Zwift, you earn drops. Use this virtual currency to splash out on something new at, drum roll please, the drop shop. They have drool worthy frames and wheel sets to satisfy every need. Choose from lightweight climbing machines like the Cannondale Evo, race specific steeds like the Conago V3RS or a fast mountain bike like the Trek Super Caliber to help you get dirty in the jungle. And there's always sweet bits of kits showing up, like the Tarmac SL7. All this begs a big question. 
save for the dream bike, or splash some digital cash on something shiny and new today. I'll leave that to you. Seven is for seven guest worlds. Watopia is the OG Zwift world. It's available 24 seven. However, there are other guest worlds and we change them out daily. Let me run them down for you. They include three cities that hosted the UCI World Championships, Innsbruck, Harrogate, and Richmond. London includes the surrounding country as well as the two. New York City's Central Park and its landmarks are there and towering above the glass roads of a future Gotham City. Last but not least, there's the newest addition, Paris in France with sunflowers in the Champs-Élysées and the tire tracks of the virtual Tour de France. Check out Zwift Insider for the latest guest world schedule. Maybe I'll see you there. Now, like a lot of people, I enjoy a challenge, and Zwift challenges, well, they come in different shapes and sizes. For some, it might be completing a full training program. For others, it might be the Everest challenge or jumping in to a team time trial. But for a lot of us, badge hunting is the name of the game, completing every single route on Zwift. Now, some are easy to tick off, but others you feel like you might never, ever, ever get done. And it's for those tougher ones, Le Keep Provence Badge Hunter series exists. So, running throughout March, every Saturday and Sunday, you can join a group of like-minded souls in the pursuit of the Four Horsemen, Quatch Quest, and Muir in the Mountain, to name just a few. We all know riding in a group is a lot more fun. It's also easier, so if you've got badges to bag, then why not jump into one or all of Le Keep Provence rides in March? Time for my new favorite feature, for whom the Dave Tolls. Get your Tollers and bingo cards at the ready. It is on like Donkey Kong from here on in. Bingo, Woo. who'd have thought that it's on like Donkey Kong would make me a winner? Me. It was the penultimate ZRL race on Monday and we're right down to the wire now, the pointy end. Let's see how the men got on. Welcome to week seven of the Zwift Racing League. This week, we move back to Richmond for the Libby Hill after party. And it is on the ammo time. This is a scratch points race. So first across the line is the winner, but it's the team with the most points at the end of the night that wins the night. A couple of power-ups being used. Welling takes that one. Man of the moment, Freddie Ovet. He is riding exceptionally well, 154 beats a minute. These sprints are coming thick and fast, aren't they? Tyler Williams there picks up five bonus points and Freddie is just keeping that powder dry. Matt Brook of the Bolt Racing Team is gonna take this one. Things are starting to kick off now. Big sprint here to- Ooh, it looks like Tyler Williams got that from Glenness. One more sprint. Oh, this is very, very close. It's Beal. It just got real. This is Canyon doing what Canyon does. One K to go. Here comes Canyon. Here comes Canyon. Jones goes. Franklin is there. Oved as well. Making it look like it's downhill. Wow. Incredible performance from Oved. 13.5 watts a kilo. Freddie Oved, the biggest star in esports today. But with three riders in the top 10, it's looking good for Canyon. Exciting racing as always, but what happened in the women's race? Well, it just so happens I've got the highlights for you right here. Kick back, enjoy the women's race. I think it's gonna be spectacular. The penultimate round of the ZRL season two. The Libby Hill after party has begun. We've got a few outsiders. Jackie Godby, watch out for her. She is a phenomenal athlete just start to see some of our first power-ups being used as we go into the first sprint. Marina Larson on the front for TFC, but they're closing very, very quickly. Jamie Lee Wright with the three points. Gutschka is well clear now. 14 watts a kilo opened up a massive gap. What an impressive sprint that was. 48 riders in this group now, so we've lost another seven riders. Big acceleration there by Keller. Keller takes the win ahead of Sarah's story. Gutschka goes again. Lethbridge is closing in, but I think she's going to take that one on the line. All of Team Hino are in this big group now as we head into the final intermediate sprint of the day. Great riding here by Hannah Peel. One kilometre of racing to go. Wilkinson also there as well. Bates, Wilkinson, Gardner. It's going to be between these three. Summers over the top. 
It looks like Godby. Somebody's coming round there. It is Jackie Godby, and she came from nowhere for Saris and the pros closet. She is the queen of Libby Hill. Full marks to Hino. It's absolutely sensational. I've got with me now the voice of the ZRL Premier Division, a man who described this show as Zwift Soup with a side order of OJ Croutons. It's Matt Stevens. And that description, Matt Stevens, I'm going to put on my Twitter byline. I love you for that description. Uh, thanks very much. I, I must admit, I was, uh, I was quite proud of that one as well. But I think it does sum up the world of Zwift reasonably well, doesn't it? So let's talk about the race and let's start with the men's first. It was full yep. on. It was fast. We had a big old group who made it to the end. And once again, we had Freddie Ovette, who has taken the first hat-trick of wins of this second season. Yeah, I mean, what can you say uh, about Freddie Ovette? I mean, uh, he took that, that, that win in Innsbruck. He, he can win on any sort of terrain. I thought the win in Innsbruck was kind of not surprising enough, but it did open my eyes to his kind of versatility. Then, of course, he, he won on the whole lot of lava course. But the whole lot of lava course, he rode differently. He, he won every single sprint. But this time, he actually waited because, because of the nature of the, the Liver Hill after party, basically pan flat with that nasty sting, sting of a, a kicker at the end. Um, there would have been a lot more fresh legs, so he rode it tactically far differently, saved himself to the end. But when he went, it was absolutely phenomenal. Nobody can touch him. I think he won by a clear second. But the Canyon Esports team, I mean, they are looking like the champions elect now. It doesn't look like anyone's going to catch them unless they have a terrible final week. They do need to have a, a, a disaster in, in the final week. We've, we've seen it happen, you know, but they're the top because they are so, so consistent, hardly even out of the top three. I think they've been in the top three every single round. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's for them to lose now. It is. That final week is going to be great. On the women's side of things, I mean, I'm pretty much sure that the, the conclusion of the women's final week will possibly see Hino making it eight out of eight. I mean, they were dominant again, although they again didn't win. They were conspicuous by their absence. They're just such a great team of being there or thereabouts in absolutely everything and scoring points. This week, they didn't actually get anybody on the podium, but they packed all three riders into the top 10 and actually the whole team finished inside the top 18. So they just, they, they clearly focused not so much on the, on, in, uh, on the individual win, but on the team win. And that's why they've got this unbelievable 100% record, which it's difficult to see them being beat in the final round. i tell you who we did see, though. Uh, we saw Saris in the pro's closet taking their first individual win through Jackie Godby. And if we talk about people who raced aggressively, that final kick was something. I mean, it looked like it was going to be, I think it was Mary Wilkinson who looked like she might have taken it. And then in the last 100 metres, even 75 metres, using a power-up, Jackie Godby came from nowhere. And I just about managed to call who it was because she timed her sprint to perfection. And again, she won, I think, by a clear second. But it, it was amazing. It really was an exciting finale. A little bit more attritional than the men's. I think we only had about 25, 30 riders come to the bottom of Libby Hill. But the, the timing by Godby, I mean, she is an absolute powerhouse. And that makes it, over both seasons, three three individual wins for her. So, yes, yeah, she's one to watch for, uh, what, for season three. Um, let's end this by talking about the other end of the table. Uh, and yeah. That is the drop zone. Because it's tight down there for who's going to get relegated this season. It is. And uh, that was really characterised and highlighted by the the riders and the teams that were attacking early on in both the men's and the women's races, the, 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 there was a lot of hotspot sprints. There was five hotspot sprints on offer today to score valuable points. And interestingly, it was Restart early in the men's who sent three riders up the road. Uh, very aggressive. It was, a, it was a, a kind of brave move, but they did score some points. Turbo were there as well. And the other and three teams were doing battle to make the race very, very interesting. In the women's, it was a vision uh, with Dame Sarah Story up there as well, trying to get points, uh, TFC, and also one of the bigger teams out there, Team Tibco Silicon Valley Bank. They're fighting for survival. Matt, always a pleasure to talk to you. I look forward to the final round next week. We'll speak to you then. Thanks very much, OJ. Don't be going anywhere. We've still got plenty more exciting content coming your way. Nathan Guerra, Carly Taylor, and me eating. It's what Sir Tim Berners-Lee invented the internet for, I think. So we've heard all about the teams at the top. Now it's time to talk about the community divisions. And the commander-in-chief of those divisions is Nathan Guerra. Nathan, how are you, buddy? Hey, OJ. I'm doing great. Thanks. Good to have you here. Now, I know for a fact, mainly because you told me so, that you thought this week, with the course that we had, it was flat, little kicker at the end. You thought it was going to be yawn, yawn, boring town. But really, it was mayhem. Yeah, I mean, I looked at it and I was like, huh, is this just going to be a parade, a procession? 
do a couple of sprints and then just a one minute. And that was kind of the conversation that was happening a little bit in the community here and there. And then we got on course and every single community division across the board splintered mayhem. It was just like over and over again. Every time we hit the sprint, somebody was dropped off. Packs were splitting in half. We ended up with like one fourth, maybe even five riders at the end of the, of the race. And some of these smaller uh, divisions, it was absolutely crazy how hard this race actually was up front. Just to get to Libby Hill definitely was one of the best rounds that I've seen yet. It was awesome. And then obviously we hit Libby Hill at the end. Now, I just want to tell you about my tactic here, Nathan, because you saw however many races it was, a lot of races. I led onto the bottom of Libby Hill, had a moment of glory in my mind, led onto the bottom, and then I waved 21 riders past me. See you at the top, guys. See you there. Watched everyone go past. Nobody really wins like that, do they, Nathan? Well, you got to be an exceptional athlete to do so. A couple well, of athletes yeah. did do it. Okay, and so um, Eddie Uli from Cryogen, he was one of the only athletes I saw go bottom to top on Libby Hill. Otherwise, almost across the board, it was kind of this perfectly timed going into the second to last turn. You can't quite see the banner yet. Megan Easler pulled it off. We saw uh, the next team pull it off as well. Uh, over and over again, I think he was even Freddie Ovid in the Premier Division. That is the same spot over and over again where we saw riders second to last corner, hit a power up right before it, take a ton of speed in, get a little bit of a gap and go to the line. So very well timed it looked like from a lot of these, uh, a lot of these athletes. A few of them though, exceptional ride from bottom to top, definitely from Cryogen and really putting Cryogen on the map with Eddie Uli. Well, you could have told me beforehand, Nathan. I had a rush of blood to the legs at the bottom. You mentioned Eddie Uli as well, riding for Cryogen. They really are the unsung heroes of the community divisions, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, they've got, they're one of the largest teams in the entirety of the whole of the community. Another one I wanted to point out as well that's making a comeback actually is Team Experimental. The West Side Team Experimental, they're fighting very on the razor's edge, but they're fighting for a top spot in the Premier Division, or a spot into the Premier Division uh, qualifiers actually. We'll see if they'll make it. <laughs> one name that you might know, Kim Little, uh, former UK national champion of Zwift on that team. Mikey Pods aligned, lots of old school names. So that's really been interesting to see as well. They make a comeback into the top end of the racing scene. Well, we've got the playoffs the week after next. Um, but next week is the final round. It is the TTT on the London Greatest Flat. Now, I know you're very puritanical about this on how to ride this course because it is going to be hard. So you really have to focus on having the correct lineup between your riders, hitting the right wheels. Do not overstep the wheels that you're on to get as much power reserve uh, as you possibly can. You got to save that energy. If you are overlapping other riders, you're not going to be able to reserve power because you're going to be fighting for the right wheel. So my suggestion, the pro tip I would have on that, use first person point of view. It's all about depth perception. Just like in real life, you've got to kind of know where that wheel is in front of you and not to overstep it. Well, Nathan, as always, it's a pleasure to talk to you. I look forward to telling you how I get on with first person view, which I'm going to try for next week in the team time trial. But Nathan, as always, good to talk to you, buddy. Thanks, OJ. Enjoy. As you know, I'm on a culinary journey across pain caves throughout the globe to find out what the best indoor racing snacks are. I've tried some pretty great ones so far, but in the words of you two, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Maybe this week will be different. Maybe this week will top the beans on Bix. Well, last week's recon rider, Katie Cookerborough, slid into the comments and left her go-to riding snack, Kendall Mint Cake. So to eat this snack, I asked for an ice axe and crampons, but apparently they're hard to come by at the moment. So this is what I've got. And here is the Kendall Mint Cake, George Romney's Kendall Mint Cake. If you're in the United Kingdom, it's something which is synonymous with the Lake District. If you're in America, Mint Romney. It's a little political joke for you right there. Now, it was the first mint cake to be cake taken to the top of Mount Everest on the 29th of May, 1953, uh, by Edmund Hillary and Sherpa Tenzing. What the second mint cake was, I don't know. Uh, I have eaten this before. It is basically a bar of sugar. Let me prove it to you with the nutritional information. Per 100 grams, 87.4 grams are sugar. Oh yes, indeed it is. So we'll open it up in this lovely retro packaging. Here you go. That is Kendall Mint Cake. First time I heard about it as a kid, I actually thought it would be cake, but no, it is a block. Okay, so when you bite into it, it's like eating toothpaste. And we've all done that. <clears throat> it's a bit tough on the throat. It's sweet, it's nice, it's edible. 
And you could see if you were in the middle of a race, this would be a great way to give you that immediate energy. The only problem is, there's so much energy in that and so much sugar, I'm gonna to need to burn it off and possibly I'm gonna to need to jump on Zwift for the entirety of this next week until the next episode. Just to burn off that sugar high, my God, I can feel my eyes pulsating. Mm. Keep posting your ultimate indoor riding food suggestions in the comments below and they could feature on a future episode. Nurse the screens and my bibs. Ah. Over the last 18 months, racing on Zwift has gone from strength to strength, but you know that. New teams forming, new riders contesting the wins at all levels, marquee events like the virtual Tour de France and the birth of the ZRL. And one rider who's been there throughout is the force that is Shayna Powerless. And we caught up with her in Jacksonville, Florida to get her take on the progression of the sport and her team. Hi, my name is Shayna Powerless and I am a professional cyclist for Team 2024. So I started riding bikes when I was two years old and then I did my first ever mountain bike race at the age of four. So both my brother and I, I think we started around the same age. So I started seeing myself as wanting to be a professional cyclist probably around the time when I was in high school. Junior, senior year, I just wanted to stick with it and prioritize it above all other sports. So I ended up on Team 2024 in 2017 decided to switch from mountain biking to road just because I wanted to try a new discipline. I love the teamwork aspect of road. 2019, that's when I really started getting into the Zwift racing. That's also around the same time that our team was really jumping on board with all the Zwift racing as well with the first ever Zwift Kiss Racing League series. Shayna Paulus now on the front there pushing 5.3 watts per kilogram. The brakes are happening now. Our whole team did that entire series and we actually found quite a bit of success. We were so new with Swift at the time and Swift racing was just a discipline that we didn't really know a ton about. Trying to like figure out the tactics behind it all. We had our work cut out for us for sure. It was definitely chaotic. We didn't have Discord at the time. Discord was something that we kind of picked up on a little bit later. It's played such a huge role in our success. A lot of times there's big gaps in between in, in real life events and it's good to keep the intensity high. Paulus may be able to pull it off. 20 points been looking for this. She might just make it happen. It's gonna be Shayna Paulus at the line. The more we were racing together as a team on Zwift, I think the better we got. The more we just kind of learned how to use power-ups, basic team tactics. It's gone such a long way since we first started. It's been amazing to see the growth and progression and just the sheer amount of people that are riding and racing on Zwift these days compared to even just a couple of years ago. Shayna Paulus at the front. She was making a 390 watts look very, very easy. And I honestly think that racing on Zwift is also harder than racing in real life in a lot of ways. Probably due to the fact that it's full gas from start to finish most of the time. Um, especially in these bigger races like in the Zwift Premier League race series. It also means that the racing has been a lot harder. So because of this, we've really had to up our game as a team. Just bringing on a couple new eSports specific riders to Team 2024, that's also been huge. Palace always immaculate on the bike, got a great uh, riding style. There has been more organized attacking from different teams. So every team's got their designated sprinters, everyone's got their designated climbers. You would see that, but I feel like it was a little bit less organized than how it has been lately. Some big goals I have over the next couple years. First, make the USA team for the UCI Esports World Championships. Other than that, I would love for our team to take the overall win in one of the next with Premier League race series. That would be huge for us. We are definitely still learning. We're not perfect, but I think that we are definitely better than when we first started. And it's been really fun to see the progress. Monday sees the final race of season two of the Zwift Racing League. How do we get here so fast? Oh, the passage of time, that's how. I sent out Carly Taylor to the virtual streets of London to recon this final course.
The final route of the Swift Racing League is going to be a fast one, with the riders tackling Greatest London Flat, and it's even a team time trial. We will no doubt be seeing riders selecting some fast looking pieces of equipment. A seven and a half kilometre lead in is pretty long. There's a few undulations early in the race, like Northumberland Avenue. Staying focused and getting up to speed is going to be key here, as no one wants to lose too much time so early in the race. The red part of the mall is probably the flattest part of the race. Maybe I should just stay here and cut some donuts around here instead. These long, straight roads in London are perfect opportunities for teams to get organised and get up to speed. It's going to be interesting to see how teams use these long roads in London. Some might use their weaker riders to sacrifice themselves in order to get a better team result. Judging by how I'm looking, I think I'm going to be one of those weaker riders. I think it's harder riding around here by myself, because I don't know about you, but I like having mates around me to distract me from the pain. When the road heads downhill towards the subway station, I think that's going to be everyone's favourite part of the race. A few sweet, sweet seconds of no pebbling before the real undulations hit. A perfect opportunity if you lost some time at the start or to claw back more and add to your advantage. But when you're going flat out in a team time trial, every little rise feels like Mount Everest. about this time of the race where the legs really start to burn and those final 10 kilometers feels like so far from the finish line. Normally this escalator climb is the perfect opportunity for some last minute attacks but in a team time trial it's all about keeping smooth and making sure everyone's together over the top everyone's legs are going to be screaming. But those riders that are feeling strong can really use these kilometres to help gain back time or even further their advantage. Who would have thought 5% would feel so steep? When the riders see the river, they're oh so close to the finish line. Only a couple K left. If you kept a steady pace, worked together and didn't lose too much time around Sari, you're gonna land your team a whip at time. Almost heading towards them all, but we're gonna take a sneaky left here at the roundabout. There's 200 meters to go when you see those green dots on the road. Here we go. It's done. Good luck everyone racing Monday. Right on. And there we have it, another episode down and another week closer to our inevitable sweep of the top prize at the next big award show. I have my eyes on best hair in an internet setting. I have to beat Matt Stevens at something. We'll see you next week to catch up on the final race of the ZRL season and plenty more action from across the world of Zwift. Until then, see you next time, ride on.